Greetings, my name is Matt Kirby. I live here in Douglas County. I'm part of the larger creative community surrounding Lawrence, Kansas. I'm an artist, a craftsman in wood and metal. I write music, I play songs. I play music on instruments that I design and build. Creativity is a prominent feature of my daily life. I live in the midst of it every day, and this relates to Lawrence. The community of Lawrence is a remarkable one in the world, founded in the modern era as a place of invention and reinvention, where the character of daily life is driven by inquiry, learning, and the progress of ideas. As I know many of you do, I thrive here and continue to learn by virtue of invention. Invention inspired by my immersion in a community of ideas and expressions. I learn through being immersed in a community of diverse experience. And diversity itself brings its formative power to the experience of multidimensional perception. In a broad sense, I've been an inventor most of my life, seeking to immerse myself in the experiences at hand as part of a deeper motivation to make things rooted in ideas, things that themselves are rooted in ideas in multidimensional ways. This leads to the main point of my presentation, the importance of actually testing and experiencing directly ideas received as abstract concepts. And this has to do with a song I wrote. I write funny songs about science. Science by itself isn't really all that funny, especially in Kansas. <laughs> but if you superimpose it on a popular tune, and bring in some plot devices, Planck's constant may begin to remind you of a bad aftershave. For instance, one of my songs teaches about superconductivity is written to the tune of supercalifragilistic, hints at the avarice of Nobel Prize winnings, and manages to rhyme fluxes with tuxes. This is also a good time to mention that I am the originator of the bumper sticker, Think Locally, Act Yokally. <laughs> and yes, I use the semicolon. <laughs> Around a year and a half ago, I rewrote an existing popular song from the Irish folk genre about a poor hapless bloke attempting to move a barrel of bricks with a rope and a pulley under pressure from his brutish supervisor. The comedic drive of this song in the form of a sick note, is the poor fellow's unfamiliarity with how to do things and the protracted series of ensuing pratfalls, worse and worse with every verse, which result in his injury. After hearing this song for decades, something struck me. This represents an outdated worldview. Are we destined for failure? Must we assume there is no ability to invent or reinvent ourselves? This would represent a tragic worldview and includes as acceptable laughing at the misfortune of others, not to mention the trope of an ethnic stereotype. What if the song were rewritten, reinvented, toward a more positive outcome, stand as a contrast to the original, teach about mechanical principles, and advance the thought to an area of personal transformation, replacing tragedy, leading to the strengthening of local social fabric and still be funny. Well, there is a backstory to this new lyric. When I was in the sixth grade back in Whitman, Massachusetts, there was a chapter in our science textbook explaining mechanical principles based on simple machines. The idea of simple machines is a really interesting one because in the entire universe, there are really only two of them, the lever and the wedge. All mechanisms, no matter how complex, or large, reduced down to levers and wedges. The wheel is just a lever with a wide surface area opposite center. Nuts, bolts, screws, and worm gears are simply wedges wrapped around the outsides or insides of cylinders. Living in adorably colonial New England, our house, like many, had its component of antiques lying around for the effect. While we classmates were studying ropes and pulleys, mechanical advantage, torque, and force applied 
in the sixth grade in a public school, this, this happened, I noticed that the stuff in our textbook looked like the stuff decorating our fireplace area. Specifically, a two pulley block and tackle from an old barn, about the size of two coffee cans. Now, if you've never threaded a two pulley block and tackle, the song here is about to tell you how. Something clicked in my psyche, and I was suddenly possessed by a drive to test the assertions in my science book out of a complex of reasons, one being to question authority. After a trial and error cobbled together, suspended in a basement door frame, imagine my eureka moment when the thing actually worked, all strung up with my mom's clothesline. I proceeded with some preparations to configure the rig up into a tree, added a seat scavenged from our swing set, positioned myself, and pulling the rope with minimal effort, ascended vertically against gravity, high into the branches of a choke cherry tree. This was a watershed moment in my little life. By reading my environment, questioning directly, experimenting, and figuring it out, I experienced liftoff. This also speaks to the nature of play as the basis for your personal scientific journey in life. Your direct experience of how the universe works is the basis for your creative language. Testing a hypothesis, assertion, or hunch builds a realistic trust in the outcomes of science. And as a product of this, brings to mind the sweep of human technological history from levers, ropes, and pulleys to quantum computing. Here are the original two verses of the song that I've been hearing for a long time. Dear boss, I write this note to you to tell you of my plight. And at the time of writing, I am not a pretty sight. My body is all black and blue, my face a deathly gray. And I hope you'll understand why Patty's not at work today. I was working on the 14th floor, some bricks were told to clear, and throwing them down from that tall height seemed quite a good idea. The foreman didn't like this, him being an awful sod. He said I'd have to carry them down the ladder in my hod. Well, it gets worse from there. Bricks fall on him, a barrel up and down a pulley bouncing around. At the end, he is injured. He's black and blue. Well, I came up with this song kind of in response. Dear boss, I write this note to you to tell you of success. And at the, and at the time of writing, I am wearing formal dress. Been meaning to get back with you, but it's been quite a day. And I hope you'll understand why good young Matty's been away. I was working on the 14th floor, some bricks were told to clear, and only took a moment looking for a fresh idea. The foreman didn't like this, in fact, he was a bully. And when he tried to cuff my ear, that's when I spied the pulley. I noticed well the distance of the pulley to the ground, and reasoned that a rope could make a circle all around. But double that circumference, and keep a constant distance by threading ropes through double pulleys side by side, for instance. This double loop would have to travel farther to go down within the same space as a single loop to go around. I thus controlled descending speed by diminishing the torque, and so did seize control of it for safe, productive work. I then proceeded fast to clear the floor of all the bricks and cleaned up three more floors and all the tools just for kicks. With time on my hands, I moved large loads of things for others, which made me wildly popular with my new union brothers. <laughs> the force of this ideas made me move outside myself. The gizmos now improved by adding stuff that's off the shelf, a folding seat and carabiners handles for the cranking. The foreman's now in anger management. It's him I'm thanking. <laughs> oh, did I mention now we have a union on the site? Inspired by new efficiencies, we're pledging to do right to give you the full value of our working and our wits. Each one of us has got my new invention in our kits. 
And though I've got more work to do and this coat's only rented, I'm happy to be recognized for something I invented. The TED Talk's Best in Show Award brought investment capital. And I'll be back on Monday with a schedule that's full. <laughs> Here's my conclusion. The collective of creative lives locally enhance the creativity and depth of my life experience. Imagine saying this within your own mind. The collective of creative lives locally enhance the creativity and depth of my life experience. My creative and expressive life inspires those around me to seek deeper meaning from their world experiences. This radiates from me as a center because each, because each of us has that capacity and effect on our local communities. I think a number of speakers here today have, have talked to this point. When in doubt or under pressure, take a moment to design using your creative language, the product of your immersion in the direct experience of your life. This, invi this invites us to new experience through inquiry, experiment, and realization. Nikola Tesla said that every disturbance in the permeating medium has instantaneous effects expanding to the firmest, furthest limits of the cosmos. If those effects have become infinitesimal in their subtlety at the furthest distance, yet still exist, consider their intensity close to the center of origin. Every person is a center of action which changes the future, not unlike a pulley around which force is redirected. Creativity is not a mystery. Everyone is creative in some way. The real question is, how and why do we immerse ourselves in the direct experiences of learning which direct our creativity? Neil deGrasse Tyson says this of learning itself. To learn how things work gives you the power to help people who may need it, to help yourself and your trajectory. Let's assume that everything you've heard here today is right. How are you going to make it all happen? Test these things and have a direct experience with them. Find a way to thread your own set of pulleys. Thank you.